Hockey fans, the Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. I'm Kenny Callagher and Jerry Burrow. This is our fourth season, Jerry, doing this show now. Yeah. Unless we've lost count. It could have been eight, but I think it's four. <laughs> we're on the yeah, we're on the air for the next half hour of the Minnesota Hockey Connection. Um, my goodness, uh, we're kicking off a new season, the 2015-16 season. Uh, high school hockey is still a ways off. The NAHL, the North American Hockey League, is celebrating their 40th season yep. as a league. Uh, they're well underway. The Minnesota Wild, uh, their preseason is about to come to an end. I believe they got one game left, and they'll get the regular season started shortly. We'll talk about that. And some college hockey. There's some college hockey news to talk about. And, Jerry, uh, where would you like to get started? Boy, well, it's another season, and uh, one thing we're going to do this year is go on YouTube. Oh, yeah. So people can pick up this show that... They don't have the, they can't get the access channel on cable. Yeah. They don't have cable TV. They might sure. have the dish or, or what's the other, what's the other dish company? Oh, you get Direct TV. Direct TV. Yeah. And they can't get the access channel, so they can pick this up on YouTube. So we're going to put it on YouTube. So that'll help a lot of uh, hockey fans to watch the show. And uh, we're going to try to get some more cable companies to put our show on. Well, let's so, talk about where we where we air. That's this is a good time to do that. We're on in uh, Duluth on public access or Pack TV channel one eighty. What times do we air? Uh, last year, I think it was ten, two, and seven. And is there a particular day? And six, on Wednesday. I'm okay, sorry. Wednesday at ten ten a.m. Two o'clock in the afternoon and seven. And seven p.m. Oh, really? All on the same day? Right. And then in the morning and the next day, why is it six or six thirty? But Thursdays? we're going to put it on our website. All right. And our website is minnesotahockeyconnection.com. Yeah. So you can go there, and it'll. We're going to have all the times. And I'm calling uh, Proctor K Media One and Cloquets. Now, Maybe. I know that we're on in Cloquet. What, is that a Saturday? It's been Saturday at 1 o'clock, but right. I'm going to see if he's going to make any changes. But Saturday in Cloquet is basically a sports day, so they have a lot of sports programming. And Proctor, I'm not sure what time he's going to have it this yeah. year because he's changed it over the years too. But we're going to have it all on our website, and as soon as we get the exact times, we'll repeat it on air here. So MinnesotaHockeyConnection.com. You can also go to our Facebook page and like us on Facebook. And Jerry, the USCHO, United States College Hockey Online.com Division I men's poll is voted on by coaches, media, and other personnel working in college hockey, whatever that means. There you go. The first weekly edition of the 2015-16 season will be released on October 12th. That is the first D1 poll. Boston College is the preseason number one in this year's USCHO.com D1 men's poll. Boston College number one. And look who sits at number two. Minnesota Duluth. UMD. Followed by uh, Boston University. North Dakota at number four. Minnesota State at number six. Providence, Harvard, and Minnesota at number nine. The Gophers in the preseason uh, D1 poll. That's got to be the lowest I've seen Minnesota start the season in a long time. They're always in the top five when they start the season. I don't know if the Big Ten can have as bad of a season this year as they did last. Oh, no. There's no way possible. Yeah. Uh, is it? <laughs> well, maybe it is. Um, you know, Wisconsin had a horrible season. And, uh, you know, we'll look into more of what they've got going on over there as the season progresses here. But... Uh, Hey, college hockey's among us. Uh, the women yep. started, uh, UMD women's team started with two wins at Central Missouri, and then they'll travel back to Amsoil Arena for games September 12th, 
or I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong one here, Lindenwood, which is based in Missouri. The women's hockey team is going to play, uh, they, they won the two games yep. at Missouri Lindenwood College. And they're on the road for the two more weeks. They go to Boston College this weekend. The following weekend, they'll be at Bemidji State. So the women will not play at Amsoil until October 16th and 17th when they take on Mankato. Yeah, and on the 17th, that's when um, Minnesota comes up here and plays uh, the men's team on Saturday night. And uh, the women will play at 3 in the afternoon. So you can yeah. get a doubleheader in if you like seeing the Bulldog hockey. Well, the Bulldogs will play their first game of the season. Sunday, October 4th, they'll host Lakehead University out of Thunder Bay, and that's an exhibition game. And then October 9th, things get started for real. October 9th, the Bulldogs will host Bemidji State, 7 o'clock, and mm -hmm. then they'll be at Bemidji State Saturday the 10th, a 7 o'clock start. Right. It's a home-and-home home with Bemidji State with Friday night uh, here at Amsoil, like you said, and then the following week, it's a home and home with the Minnesota Gophers. Uh, the yeah. Friday nights down yeah. at, uh, you know, Mariucci Arena, and then up here on Saturday night. So start out two good teams, one in the WCHA and one in the Big Ten. <laughs> well, the Bulldogs are led this year by Andy Walensky, and uh, who was the other preseason uh, pick? Oh, Cas Casuo. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He had a great first season. Boy, he came out of nowhere. He, he played for the Wilderness and that, and all of a sudden, at uh, right after the first of the year, when that first year at the Wilderness, he all the scouts started coming to watch him, <laughs> and he's hasn't let him down. <laughs> well, the coaches, the media, and other personnel working in college hockey, again, have picked uh, UMD number two in the uh, preseason poll. So they see something in this makeup of this team that's in impressive. And the coaches even in the NCHC picked them number one in the league. So, I mean, I guess uh, they see something. I wonder if this puts a little extra pressure on the team to get started. But I think they're, they're pretty deep. And I like this team, you know, and they got some character on this team. And I tell you what, they got a lot of good recruits coming in in the next five years. They got some good ones coming in. <laughs> The big change for UMD this year, of course, is the coaching staff. Derek Plant is out and Brett Larson is in. Right, and Brett Larson was here before and he did a great job. And he took off with the other assistant coach, Steve Rolick, and the associate coach then over in Ohio State. First, uh, Brett went down to Sioux City and he was a general manager coach at the Sioux City Musketeers in the USHL. And he was there, I think, three years. Then he went to Ohio State. Yeah. So it's good to see Brett back. It is. It's fantastic. And I know his, uh, his family's excited. Uh, of course, the team and the players are very excited. The, the university, uh, UMD, uh, it, the school is excited to have him back. And uh, Derek Plant, he's going to be a scout for the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh-oh. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Pulling got, those boys out of this area to go down and play for the Blackhawks. Was there a connection with Norm McIver? You think so? <laughs> yeah. Is that and, what he's going to be doing, huh? Yeah. He's, well, good for him. I mean, I don't know how much he'll be doing, but he's going to be a scout for Yeah, them. so he'll be paying attention to uh, right. a lot of youth around this area. Yeah. So And he knows them. <laughs> and keep that in mind. If you play high school hockey, you will be seen by professional scouts. Right. And guess, um, I just noticed this uh, this week. I was down at uh, in Blaine where they had the, all the... North American Hockey League teams there for their showcase. Their, that was their 40th year in the league starting off now. And they bring all the teams in. And I noticed uh, someone was telling me Jamie Lingenbrenner is going to be a scout for the Boston Bruins. I did hear that. Yeah, yeah. I read that somewhere. So we're getting yeah. a lot of local kids yeah. that do a lot. I mean, ex-pros that are... Doing well, a lot well, of stuff in hockey still. Yeah, let's talk about the NAHL. The Minnesota Wilderness, based in Cloquet, they've uh, started their season. Uh, they're already... What, Six games in. Yeah, they're 2-3-1. and one. They're in third place of the Midwest Division. And they will play this weekend up at Northwoods Credit Union Arena in Cloquet. Friday, and these are 7.30 starts. Friday and Saturday, this weekend, up in Cloquet versus the Kenai River Brown Bears. And that team is one in seven, so the Wilderness have an opportunity to make some ground here in their division, playing a team that's one in seven. 
And I got to tell you, I'm a part of the team this year and the fact that I will do some PA announcing up there. I've already done, well, I've been up there for two games and I'll be up there this Saturday. Oh, you are? Again. Good. And I got to tell you, Jer, I this was the first time I got to see any uh, any uh, games in this league. I'm impressed. It's fast paced. The transition is great. Up and down the ice. And uh, hey, they, I mean, the first weekend at PA. Um, that Fairbanks team is probably the best team in the league right now. Right, as, right. Uh, right now. Yeah. Second half of the season, that can change. But uh, right now, that's the best team. They're undefeated right now. I think they're eight and whole. So uh, they're starting out great. And they have a lot of Minnesota kids, that Fairbanks team. So, And Minog is another team that has a lot of Minnesota kids, and plus the Wilderness. And w- here's the thing with the Wilderness. They won the league championship, the Robertson Trophy. Right. And... Um, They've lost about 14 players from that team. Oh, so my. It's like starting over. Yeah. So give them a half a season. They're going to be all right. They got a good goalie. And, I mean, some of these young kids, they have to develop them. You know, this is their first year in the league. And they're a little intimidating. You well, know? And the coaching staff isn't going to let this team slide. I mean, Corey right. Millen, the head coach, Josh right. Petrich, the assistant coach. And they've got a good support staff up there with the owner, Chris Trapp. Right. Of course, Chris was on this program last year with his son, Alex, who is still a part of the team. And at the start of the season, they had some players that were hurt or suspended. And now they're going to get back the Toscanos. And yeah, he played uh, three games down in Blaine. He got back What's, there, I mean, what's the situation with Jack Forbert? He's got an injury from last year. and A he, nagging injury, yeah, apparently. Yeah, well, he thought he can just rest it and that'll work. And it didn't work out. So it looks like he might have surgery. And if he does, then he'll be out for at least half the season. And this is it for him. After this, he's yeah. Well, at least it looks in this, like league, it. In this it league. looks like it. Yeah. I mean, this is his. He has to get back there and play. So. Well, as long as we're talking about Forberts, Derek Forbert, a former East standout, now has made the roster for the Los Angeles Kings. Well, he's not on the top twenty-three yet. I don't think they're down to twenty-three. I heard he was. Oh, really? Yeah. They're down to twenty-three already. Yeah. They got another Is week. It twenty-three to do... or twenty-five? No, twenty-three when the season starts. So we'll see. Yeah. He's still there though, but they he's in. Um, they'll keep seven. <coughs> there's there was nine I read the other day that there's twenty-seven left kids, and um, there's nine D left, and I think they'll come down to seven. Yeah. So we'll see. Then. Best of luck for Derek. Like to see him up there. Oh he, yeah. I mean, he's worked his butt off the he last few years. Sure. You know? And you know, he had two good years, three well, three good years over at North Dakota. And he was part of some of those real good East teams right. when uh, uh, Tardy was there. And uh, yeah, he played uh, through his junior year. Then he went to the development team over in Ann Arbor for his senior year. I wish he would have stayed, but hey, things happen. That. And he went that direction, and um, then he went to North Dakota, and he's a big boy. Yeah. He's a 6'5", and he has wings and that, but he, he's very skilled. He, he can move that puck. And so he just had the, the Kings, um, Sutter, he likes a um, little toughness in his D. So they have to work on him and that. So he's getting better at that. So that's helping him a lot. And, hey, he has a good chance of – Playing in a lot of games there this year. Of course, you are the high school hockey guru. Uh, what high school hockey uh, notes do you have? Well, the Minnesota Elite League has been going on since the weekend after Labor Day, and uh, this is the best uh, high school kids in Minnesota, Wisconsin. Shattuck's team just came in this weekend. And then the Great Plains team has a few North Dakota, but mostly out there like Bermidji, Moorhead, Roseau. But um, so there's six Minnesota teams, Wisconsin and Shattuck are the main teams. Yeah. They've been playing three weeks now, and they play three week, three games every week. And I tell you what, the North team, which is 15 of the kids are from three high schools up here, Hermantown, Duluth East, and Grand Rapids are 8-1. and one. They're in first place in the league. Really? So awesome. they're playing real good. Good, good. And they'll they'll be in, uh, the elite team will be in Duluth on, four of the teams will be in Duluth on uh, 24th and 25th of October at Mars Arena. So they play early in the morning, like 9, 9.30, the first game, and then they play one right after that. And then Saturday night, 6 and 8.30, and 
than Sunday morning. So if you want to see the Elite, otherwise most of the games are this weekend, they're over in Moorhead, but most of the games are down at New Hope. But it's a great hockey, a lot of pro scouts, college recruiters are there because these are the top elite players in Minnesota. And these kids will play high school hockey when uh, practice starts on November 9th in November. Yeah. Now the Minnesota Wild have, are into their preseason schedule. They've got a game Thursday, October 1st, their final preseason right. game against Buffalo. And then they are going to come to Duluth for some r They're in Duluth right now. Oh, they're here. They came right after the game last night. Oh, so they're going to spend a few nights here yep. and then wrap up this. They're here until Wednesday okay. late afternoon. Then they go back Wednesday late afternoon or night. All right. Back, and then they play that so last So an opportunity for the game. media will be right. Tuesday. So Tuesday, tomorrow. And then the public will have an opportunity. On Wednesday. Wednesday morning. So I think they're practicing about 9.30. All right. Did you hear that? Uh, I didn't look. At, I, I didn't get all the details. But on I that. think it's about 9, 30, 10 o'clock each, in the morning. Yeah. Tuesday and Wednesdays, right. and right. Wednesday the fans. Okay, from, so they're here now. Right. They all came right. right after the game last night. Well, the Wild again will play the Sabers uh, Thursday, October first, and then things get going for real, folks. Thursday, October eighth, the Wild will play in the season opener at Colorado. That's an eight right. o'clock start. And that game is on NBC Sports Network. The Wilds' first home game is Saturday, October 10th, versus the St. Louis Blues, 7 o'clock. And check out your schedule. There's going to be a lot of games this year, not just on FSN, but the Wild are going to broadcast a lot of their games on FS Wisconsin. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's great. I mean, more people can watch them. And that is the case uh, Saturday the 10th. FS Wisconsin will be the uh, place to see the... Uh, the Wild. See, I was up at the uh, Northwoods Credit Union Arena to see the wilderness, and I ran into a familiar face, a familiar <laughs> coach, if you will, Mark Wick. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mark Wick. The He'll head, be back. Yeah, the head coach at the College of St. Scholastica. Had to take a leave last year late in the season, and I asked him, and I said, are you back? He says, I'm back. So he's back. Coach Mark Wick, good to hear that. Uh, we'll him. catch up with him here as the season progresses. And the season for Saints Scholastica will start Friday, October 30th. Uh, the Saints will host Wisconsin River Falls at Mars Lakeview Arena at 7 o'clock. <coughs> Excuse me. And Saturday, Wisconsin Stout, October 31st. Stout and Scholastica at 7 o'clock. And you got to believe that's going to be a ghoulish evening at Mars Lakeview Arena, <laughs> Halloween night. <laughs> and uh, over on, on the other side of the river, Wisconsin Superior will play at Northland on Friday the 30th. And then Superior will be at Finlandia on the 31st. So they start at the end of the month. Yes. The D3. That's kind of funny why they're a month later than yeah. like D1. Yeah. So one of the... St. Alaska and uh, UWS women play start. I'm not sure. I'm not Probably, sure. Probably, I think they start a couple weeks earlier. Yeah. Usually. That. But that's good. Hockey's starting all over. and It has. It's and, underway. The women I mean, are leading the charge, too. Again, the Bulldogs opened up their season with two wins in uh, at Lindenwood in Missouri. Yeah. Well, about 10 days ago, I was down in um, Waterloo for the USHL. Had five the five Iowa teams in the league play in Waterloo. And uh, I, I met up with Phil Ballou, the, who, played, who at, oh, that, yeah. at that time played for Duluth East player, former Duluth East player. That he plays for Waterloo. And then another former player from Duluth East, Andrew Kerr, plays for Dubuque. And then another one, Connor Velasano. Remember that sure, name? Sure, you bet. Yeah, he left a year early to go to juniors. He's in his fourth year, but he's finally playing on the first two lines, and he's playing special teams. So he's going to get a lot of looks from um, D1. Yeah. And so does Andrew. But so funny, I met with them down in the locker room, talked to them. They're all doing good, and it's just great to see these yeah. former players doing good. But right after I left, the next day, Phil Blue is the number one D on the Waterloo team, Blackhawks. He gets traded. Really? <laughs> yeah. To? To Madison. My goodness. That, that's uh, Suter's. He owns half the most of the team. You know, I wonder how some of those trades happen, if there's maybe some issues with 
Maybe the player, does the player ask for a trade? Or, Sometimes, but yeah. they usually don't get it when they ask. Yeah. But um, it's just a need. Someone has a need, and they'll give up a lot for that need. So I don't know exactly, because I was watching Waterloo and never using Phil for everything. He was Well, there. you can't question his he was value. There, he was their one-two pair all the sure, time. Sure. He was on power play all the time. <coughs> so, yeah. And the only reason probably he didn't go to, he's uh, committed to the University of Nebraska, Omaha. The only reason is that they got almost all their players back. Yeah. I think they got 17 players back. So, <laughs> and they, so he probably wouldn't play that much as if he went there. So sure. So this is, gives him more, he's playing, he's going to develop still. And so and then he'll jump right in next year. So, well, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And online vote. To determine North Dakota's nickname will be held October 19th through the 23rd, according to a report in the Grand Forks Herald. The vote will open at 8 a.m. on October 19th and close at midnight on October 23rd. Four days, huh? Voters will choose between the Fighting Hawks, No Dax, North Stars, Rough Riders, and Sundogs. Continuing to play as UND or North Dakota is not included in the vote. Those individuals able to vote are current UND students, faculty and staff, retirees, alumni, donors, and season ticket holders. If a person fits into more than one voter category, they still are only allowed just one vote. And of course, the school's Fighting Sioux logo was retired several years back <laughs> after the NCAA th threatened sanctions. And I got to tell you, I don't think there's any question they're going to revive the fighting name and go with Fighting Hawks. Yeah, but did you hear the story? The mayor of Bismarck, he had this great idea. He went and got the rights of some, some of the, I thought one of them was the Fighting Hawks. Yeah. He paid twenty-five dollars, so he has he owns the right to that name in North Dakota. Meaning? So let's say if North Dakota wants to go with that name, they have to buy the rights from him. That's what. Huh? That's what I heard. I don't know if that's it was in the pa it was in the paper and everything. Oh really? Yes. He took about five of the most popular names they had going, and he bought the rights to it. <laughs> so I wonder if that's going to cause a problem that that one of those names come up. He says he'll never sell them even for a million dollars. <laughs> this is getting crazy. Oh, up there. I I'll love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, North Dakota hockey. Uh, well, no one wants North Dakota. You know, wow. just playing. Yeah. yeah. So, well, stay tuned on that one. This is going to be interesting. Well, they better not choose the North Stars. That won't yeah, settle well no. with Minnesota fans. No. And Rough Riders and Sun Dogs. What happened to Flicker Tails? The old name. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And no Dax. I have I see no way that that advances. No Dax. Fighting Hawks sound like the, if they're going to have a name. Yeah, yeah. I think they're a name. good one. But that'll go on forever. A lot of people up there will go to their grave upset over this whole thing still. <laughs> the Wilderness scrimmaged in an exhibition game, the Magician, Minnesota Magician. Right. Based out of Rich, uh, Richfield, I believe. Right. And I overheard a conversation with head coach for East, Mike Randolph, talking to some of his players. I'm not sure who they were. And he said none of those kids on that magician team could make the current roster at Duluth East. Wow. That's a strong statement. <laughs> and I thought, okay, this is Mike Randolph saying this. This isn't some well, you know, sideline viewer. It was the way they were playing that night. What's happening is the magicians are very young, too, and then they're – they're trying to fit a team, and these players are coming and going. They're switching, trading, and everything, trying to get some players that can play. And it's tough at first, you know. Yeah. And it takes a few weeks every season. That's a difference between junior hockey. Almost every year you got to redo your team. Exactly. And it, yeah. that's the toughest thing in the world yeah. in coaching, I thought. Well, look at college. You're going to get your players three, four years. Uh, pro. The best players are going to be there 10 years. I mean, in high school even, you get three years out of them. So, I mean, here, you get one year and they're gone or something like that, or they move up, but they improve. So it's a tough coaching job, really. Yeah. And you got to prove yourself all the time because it's a business. you got to bring the fans in. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because, I, again, I'm going to be doing some of the PA work on a part-time basis for the wilderness 
And the game I was at against Fairbanks the opening weekend on Saturday, well, I was at both Friday and Saturday, okay. they've got some great sponsors. Right. They've got a lot of them. They seem to have great support from the community regarding the fans. Uh, it, it, it's a good brand of hockey. If you're looking for a, a, a oh, low, yeah. low cost uh, hockey game for the family, uh, the entertainment factor is great. Uh, yep. They do serve beer and alcohol up there. And uh, I was impressed. Yep. I really was. And uh, they got a great light show now. They do. They do. <laughs> That's good. Uh, they, they've added that. Uh, and they are the defending Robertson Cup champions. So right. they've got something to play They'll for. have that trophy there. So, I mean, I've saw, I mean, I saw it when they first got it. They had a party and that, so I went to it. And then they had it down in Blaine for the showcase for all the teams and that. Was showing there. It's a nice trophy. Yeah. I mean, it looks like, uh, I mean, it's huge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, they got a good arena that they playing up and, there. Um, and another nice thing, yeah. they got a lot of local kids on that team. They got some East kids. They Who's the them. UMD recruit that's on that roster? Oh, I don't think they have a UMD recruit on that. I thought they did. Let me see. I got the book here from the well, showcase. I know Scott Sandlin was up there uh, watching the boys. They're always and looking, yeah. True, true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, isn't there, or maybe, was it the Fairbanks team? Oh, they had one last year that left. Yeah. That went to, it's going to UMD. Who's that? Exel. Yeah. From Thunder that's, Bay. That's who it was. You're right. So his career in the NAHL is over. Yes, it is. Yeah. There's magicians. Let's see. Yeah, he's gone. But they, I mean, look at they got uh, Toscano, and hopefully Forbrook can come back. Alex Trapp, the owner's son, Chris's son. Freight train. Yeah. Boy, he, when he hits, yeah. we'll watch out. And oh, so yeah. Toscano, too. Yeah. Tough yeah. on the boards and that. Yeah. I mean, he stays out of the penalty box. He's a great player. Well, we've come to the end of the show. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is produced at the studios at Pack TV in Duluth City Hall. And we appreciate the uh, help from uh, Jim and Liz and the folks here. And you can look for us on the internet, minnesotahockeyconnection.com. And, of course, go to our Facebook page and like us there, and you'll get updated there as we go out throughout the season. And we're off to start another season, Jerry, season number four. All right. Yeah. Good to see you again. Yeah. All right. And, again, we'll be back here next week to drop the puck. We'll see you then.